please. Taoiseach, I believe the government are deceiving the public about what is actually happening in the health service and that while you claim you're trying to recruit people uh, to the health service to address the ever-growing waiting lists uh, for which have now reached nearly a million people on various hospital waiting lists or the 10,000 children waiting for assessment of needs or the 110,000 children uh, waiting for therapies or the hundreds of people waiting for hours on trolleys in emergency departments. You say you're trying to recruit to fill the staff shortages necessary to address that, but in actuality you are imposing a recruitment embargo by another name called the pay and number strategy which is restricting the ability of uh, hospitals and the health services to recruit the people they need. And you're gaslighting the public about the truth of this. You absolutely are. Uh, I was talking to uh, people who will be in here later today who are radiation therapists and they say that despite capital investment in, for example, linear accelerators and scanners in Cork, in Galway, in St. Luke's, the machines are sitting idle because they don't have enough staff and if people leave, there's no guarantee at all they will be replaced and there's no effort to recruit the people that are necessary. In my own hospital, uh, I was informed and got figures from the HSE 21 less staff than required. Then I get a letter after we have a protest and a meeting saying, oh, we're going to try and recruit the 21 staff. That was a month ago. How many jobs advertised for St. Michael's Hospital? Two. Two. And the same picture appears everywhere else. Lord's Hospital in Kilkenny have only 75% of their posts filled. Uh, 27 jobs needed. 27 jobs needed. How many advertised for Kilkenny? One. One. So you're not trying to recruit the people. That's what's actually happening. You suppress jobs, you created an artificial uh, ceiling or quota for staff based on whoever happened to be in post in December 23, completely uh, arbitrary, and if those posts weren't filled, according to the INMO, uh, 2,000 nursing posts suppressed. And you see, it's very simple for me. Who do I believe? Do I believe the government or do I believe the INMO, the nurses, who are balloting for industrial action? Do I believe the health workers who are uh, protesting outside the University Hospital in Kerry at the moment? Do I believe the hospital consultants who are saying the waiting lists are getting longer, they're going to be longer this year than they were last year? I believe the health workers, I don't believe you. And uh, the workers are saying we are stressed, we are overworked, uh, that sa staffing levels are not safe, patient safety is being endangered, uh, and they are utterly, utterly demonstrated. Moralized. Tell the truth uh, about what's happening in the health service and scrap the pay and numbers strategy. We won't scrap the pay and numbers strategy because that's how you run the country. You run government departments and public services by providing a budget that's voted through this house. That budget then translates into a number of positions in, in, in any public service agency. And then the agency or the minister responsible ensures that those positions are filled. So if it is a position of you that there shouldn't be any any budget at all linked to employment, that's, well, that is radical, but maybe you're happy. No, no, sorry, sorry, excuse me, sorry. No, no, excuse me, sorry. So there's language. Thanks, Kim Corla, because, you know, we don't need to use language in the sense of it deceive and gaslighting. Like, there are, there are facts, and I, ha I have facts, and I've outlined them. Now, you can tell me whether you, be, no, you can wave your sheet of paper, but you can just, you'll get another little chance in a minute, so can you just give me a little opportunity to respond? It would be appreciated. Do you accept that there are 9,375 additional nurses and midwives working in uh, in the health service now than there was in 2020? That there's 4,092 health and social care professionals additional to 2020? That there's 3,330 doctors and dentists? They're facts that I'm putting on the record of the house. They're not numbers, they're real people who get up out of bed every day, go to work and work in our hospitals and our health service. They work damn hard and they make a, a good progress for our patients. So that's the first thing. There is an issue and I've acknowledged this very clearly, and you're right to highlight it, there is a real issue when it comes to the issue of radiation 
therapy. Uh, and there's a very, very real issue. I've had a number of meetings specifically in relation to this, including with the Cancer Society. There are radiation therapist vacancies in radiation oncology centres. They're vacant posts. They're still available to be recruited. They are funded. Now, measures have been taken to address international recruitment of radiation therapists, including a recent change to CORU's requirements for practice hours to bring Ireland into line with international practice. Additional training places were introduced for radiation therapists uh, during the last academic year. There's plans to further expand courses in Trinity College Dublin and University College Cork to meet expected future demand. And funding for advanced practice posts for radiation therapists was recently announced in Budget 2025. So I accept fully there are real challenges when it comes to radiation therapy. And your point about equipment that is there that could be further utilised, could we fill these posts, is true. And that's something that the Minister and the Government are working on, and I've outlined what we're trying to do in relation to that. When it comes to waiting lists, though, you're not acknowledging facts either. I mean, countries across Europe are reporting increased <coughs> pressure on waiting lists. In England, waiting lists climbed to 7.6 million by June 2024. Uh, there, that means inpatient day case hospital waiting lists have climbed 80% in England since the start of the pandemic. In Northern Ireland, we've seen on a per capita basis the figures effectively double the comparable figure uh, for Ireland. Scotland, waiting lists have increased by 96%. Here in Ireland, waiting lists have now fallen for two years in a row. Waiting times have fallen for two years in a row. That's what doctors will tell you. They'll also tell you that they're too high, and we agree with that too, and we want to continue to make progress in relation to that. But you have to have an honest debate. You want to talk about truth, you have to have an honest debate. Waiting times are falling. Staff numbers are increasing. Budgets are increasing. More people are working in the public health service than ever before. We want to continue that journey. But this idea of you're not hiring anyone the waitlist, it, it doesn't stand up to scrutiny. Lloyd Barrett, thank you, Tisha. Of course the numbers are growing. Our population is growing and the need is growing. So baffling people with uh, figures that are out of context doesn't tell you the real truth. Uh, waiting lists are not falling, according to the hospital consultants that you mentioned. They're saying they're going to increase by 11% this year. So that we'll have 746,000 people waiting for outpatient appointments and just under a million waiting for hospital uh, appointments. I suppose you think the waiting list for assessment of needs or for uh, therapies are not facts either, do you? Uh, they are facts. And we have evidence all over the place uh, of them. And on the understaffing of our hospitals, as I mentioned to you, I got the Ireland Hospital East Group, minus 12, Wexford uh, General, minus 21, uh, St Michael's, Lachlanstown, minus 4, Lourdes, minus 27, uh, and you can go on through the list, minus 41 in South Tipperary, minus 57 in St Luke's in Kilkenny. Uh, and in all of those cases, the jobs are not being advertised or a fraction of the number that even the HSE acknowledge are needed are not being up, advertised Deputy. because there is a de facto embargo. Time is up now. That's Time what is. paying numbers is. And you admitted the truth when you mentioned budgets. You are setting staff ceilings even when up, we Barrett, need staff please. in vital, vital areas to address the needs. Taoiseach by the fact that you think it's kind of breaking news hold the front page that the reality is that organisations are given a budget and they can employ people within that budget. The budget that we've given for the health service allows them to hire 7,500 more people between the end of this year and the end of next year. Last year saw the highest number, last year saw the highest number of staff ever recruited in the history of the HSE. And when I quote facts, I'm, I'm bamboozling people or spin or all this. When you quote them, they're absolute gospel. Like, let's actually have an informed debate here. St. Michael's... Sorry. Please, Deputy, will you stop interrupting? The faux outrage must be utterly exhausting. In St. Michael's Hospital, your, your hospital, as you call it, in the, in the hospital in your constituency, in the hospital in your constituency, there's a 5% increase in staffing levels since this government came to office. Now, that's the truth, Deputy Boy Barrett. There are more people working in that hospital, despite your constant talking down of the government's recruitment efforts. There's more people working in that hospital. And when it comes to safe staffing, which is the agreed staffing structure that we have for safe nursing levels in the Irish Health Service, every single post in the safe staffing structure is now funded, 2,000 posts, 1,500 are filled, 500 are fully funded. These are facts. Thank you, Tisha.